Hi, ladies and gentlemen of chemistry. This is a quick little screencast for you to help you understand the relationship between pressure and volume in gases. What you're looking at here is a set of fictional data that um, was put together here to elucidate this, these ideas here. And what I want to make sure that you understand here is that I put this graph together on the vertical axis is pressure and the unit is kPa and that's called kilopascals. And on the horizontal axis or the x-axis, this of course is volume and the unit is milliliters. And these data points are actually pretty authentic to something you could potentially uh, actually have here. Um, and if you haven't already, you will actually construct a graph like this using a variable volume container, which is really just a plastic syringe. And those syringes are marked in milliliters. And what you can do is change the position of that little plunger in the syringe. Now, I realize all these volume measurements have a 0.8 at the end of them. And the reason why that is so is because you need to add 8 tenths of a milliliter to account for the amount of volume in the neck of the gas pressure sensor that you'll use in association with that syringe. So if your syringe reads 10 milliliters, you actually type in 10.8 milliliters when you are uh, constructing your graph. Well, what you see here is this trend, this data trend here. And what I want to stress to you is that you should notice that as pressure goes up, that means going up on the graph, volume is going down. And the converse is true as well. If volume goes up, pressure is going down. And what I'm going to make a note of here for you is that um, when you graph this data set, what you're going to be asked to do is do a best fit line. And this is not a line. This is actually a curve. So what you need to do is select this button right here in your um, Logger Pro or Graphical Analysis button, select Curve Fit. And then you're going to pre be presented with these general equation options in this Curve Fit window. And what you need to do is scroll down to this variable power formula, ax to the nth power, and you need to make your nth power negative 1. And when you do that, go ahead and press this button down here called Try Fit. Hit OK. And what we have here is this best fit line here for this data set. Now what you can also do is do this analyze function and use interpolate. And what that will do is it'll present this window to you. And if you notice this little circle here traveling along the best fit line, wherever that circle is, is indicated by this uh, box right here. So it's telling you 4 and 268.9. If I move it down here, my volume is 7.7 .7 and 140.8, or it fluctuates a little bit if I move that position. So the interpolate is a good thing to do to um, actually trace the x and y values. In this case, the x values are volume and the y values are pressure uh, at, for any point on this best fit line. When we have a function like this, we don't have a slope to calculate. But, um, well, you can actually calculate slope, but the problem is, is that on a curve, the slope changes constantly. And it's difficult to calculate the slope in any one pla place unless you know this math technique or set of techniques called calculus, um, which probably most of you in high school chemistry are not quite there yet. But what you can understand here is that we can develop a constant. And what we can do is develop a mathematical model that allows us to predict if I change the pressure, what would be the volume, or if I change the volume, what would the pressure be? And I just want to show you some math here to show you how we can figure out that constant. And what I'm going to do is just start multiplying my uh, volume values by my pressure values and just seeing what happens. So I'm going to open up this calculator here. And what I'm going to do is volume, uh, the volume uh, number one here, I'm going to multiply that by my pressure. And so I'm just going to type in 10.8. That's my first volume value. And I'm going to multiply that by 101.25. And oops, that didn't work. So let me try that again. 10.8 multiplied by 101.25. And I get this number 1093.5. So what I'm going to do is in my notes section, I'm going to write that down here. Volume 1 times pressure 1 equals 1,093.5. Was that the number? Yes, it was. All right. 
Let me try that again for another one of these values. I'll just take, I'll take um, volume three and pressure three. So volume three, I'm going to multiply that by pressure three, and we'll see what happens there. So let me clear that. So volume three was 6.8, and I'm going to multiply that by 159.50. And I get 1084.6. Not the exact same, but it's actually a pretty similar number. 1084, 1084.6. All right, let me try another set of values. How about the fifth set of values, 14.8 and 73.27 for pressure and volume, respectively. So I'm going to do, that's my fifth volume. And I'm going to multiply that by my fifth pressure. Let's do that here. My fifth volume was 14.8, and I'm going to multiply that by 73.27. And that's 1084 point, I'll round that up to 1084.4. All right, so let's look at this situation here. As I look at these three different math operations, what I'm seeing is that when I multiply pressure times the corresponding volume in any of these particular settings, I'm getting a fairly constant result. Now, they're not exactly the same, and that can be accounted for by discrepancies in really what the actual volume is, or maybe our syringe leaked, or maybe the gas pressure sensor isn't sensing exactly right. But what I'm seeing here is that really for any volume uh, and multiplying it by its corresponding pressure, as long as I don't change the number of particles or I don't change the temperature, I'm seeing that the values are pretty constant. So what I'm going to just say is, pressure times volume, which is the same thing as volume times pressure, is equal to a constant K. And then from that, what we can do is just r really say that any pressure multiplied by its corresponding volume should be equal to any other pressure multiplied by its corresponding volume. So we have this formula. If these are equal, if these are both equal to a constant, what that means is that they're also equal to one another, which means then that we can predict one volume if we change the pressure, if we have another volume pressure set to compare. So this is our volume pressure relationship. We call this an inverse relationship, and we multiply the values to develop the constant. Hopefully that helps you, ladies and gentlemen, and that's our pressure volume relationship in gases. As long as we don't change the number of particles and we don't change the temperature, um, any pressure times its corresponding volume should be equal to any other pressure multiplied by its corresponding volume, and that's how we've developed this formula here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. Bye-bye.